Last night, Emerson Anderson had left his home and walked a few houses away to socialize with some friends. It was something he usually did here inside a yard of a long barracks. Shortly before 8 o'clock, not long after the group began their game around the table, a lone gunman fired at them from the roadside. Money, one of Anderson's friends, who withheld his name, was with the group. We were socializing out of the blues, uh, a little nice. Get down, boom, boom, beside that, yeah, pa 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 a whole heap of shot, all I could do was just jump on the ground and keep low, running on my hands because I didn't think about get up in that moment. All I wanted to get out of the reach, huh? It was rough, it was rough. How many of you were there? Like three of us were there. I didn't have time to see he went that side and I dropped on the ground and tried to reach out of reach, you know, and like get him right on the side there. I got up a little and run behind my house and by the time I can hear, little got shot, little got shot, boy, let me get shot. So I just like, yo, speed back this way and like people on the side because I know he went that way and I saw the man sitting there holding, I saw the blood on his, and it was hurt. It's like, I remember standing here, jumping down. I, I look at myself, I didn't get shot, but, you know, I helped my little boy and try to reach out. We haul off a vehicle, tell them, phone the police. He said he had no time to see who was shooting at them. Anderson was hit in his stomach and died while receiving treatment at the Carl Houston Memorial Hospital. His friends escaped the hail of bullets on Skid. Several of these, however, hit one of the concrete homes inside the yard at least four times. When police processed the scene, they found expended shells scattered near the garbage bins. Today, police told the media that they have no evidence to show that Anderson was the intended target. So far, we are trying to establish what can be the motive. We know that Mr. Anderson is not involved with any gang and does not have a history that we can speak about. We believe that the target was somebody else who was along with him. Anderson's family say he was no troublemaker. His aunt, Elipat Skeet, firmly believes the gunman was after someone else. They always say people, when people die, people get on the um, news and say they were good and, and sort of different thing. But for me to say that would be the truth, hey? Um, and me coming up as a little boy in the neighborhood here, everybody knew him. He was always friendly, always jovial. Um, I cannot say that he was the target. It was just, I believe, random shoot. For me, he wasn't the target because he's not a troublemaker. And that I could say with pride because that is the truth. And if you, anybody that knows him will say the same thing, you know? He's always so humble, always so quiet. Never seem to get into problems. Another of his aunts, Lorraine Courtney, lives at the long barracks where Anderson was shot. She was in bed when the shots rang out. Every day he come here and, you know, he a run joke, you know, and waiting, you know, and that's all. He never did tell you if he got problems with nobody? No. He no have problems, no, because he no quarrel, he no fight, he no cuss, he no troll people. So he never did say if anybody made a threat, no, no, no. No, we don't have fuss with people, he no quarrel. His friend also said he could not understand why this has happened. A lot of times stuff like that happen around this neighborhood, but as far as I know, I'm not looking for no one. Like you see, I'm selling my panadas. My friend wasn't looking for no one either. He, he has his family, he had his kids, you know. It's a problem right now, so we just got to try to overcome this, you know. You know, I just hope he had God in his heart and he's blessed. Uh, he was trying, I come doing right now, you know. So you don't understand really why that was happening? Uh, really, and I, it's like, it's like, it's like a dream of overnight madness, you know, like you got up in a, you would call it, nightmare. For Anderson's family, the crime situation that has gripped Belize City has reached inside her home. But despite their pain, they maintain strength and hope. For our family, we don't want really um, retaliation because that's not the answer. Everybody keeps saying, oh, it will never stop, but people need to start saying it will stop and do something about it to make it stop. And for it to stop is for us to come together as a people and our government, our leaders, to do better than what they're doing, you know? It's, I mean, these guys don't cross the border. How does guns get in our country, you know? So 
for me, it's getting our act together from the heads that be and implement factories so that these guys could have jobs, so that they could have money to feed their families and then maybe that would assist them to not have time to think about hurting other families, you know, especially innocent people. You know, it's really, really hard. But I just will continue to pray for them because at the end of the day, um, God is our justice. Dalai Kal, Love News.